If this integral frustrates you and you've been stuck, you're about to finally understand it, but only if you stick around until the end, because I'm going to show you an easy to understand method where you can crush this on your next exam like a ninja. So when you see a problem like this, I'm sure you already tried a U substitution and got stuck because when you set U to be X squared, the problem is that when you then take the derivative of both sides, you'll be left with a 2X DX on the right. But unfortunately, in the original problem, we have a constant on the numerator and not an X. So that doesn't work. Work. So the way I like to approach this kind of a problem is the following way. When I see a square root on the denominator where inside the square root I have something like 4 minus x squared, when I see this constant minus something squared, I already think about something I want to do. So I want to make this 4 minus x squared be transformed to look differently in a way where it's a lot easier to integrate. And then I want to work backwards from that to figure out what I need to do. So I usually then think about this very famous trig identity where you have sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. And you might be looking at this and you're wondering, oh, Dave, I don't understand why this even matters. Well, the thing is you need to subtract cosine of squared of theta on both sides of the equation because check this out. Now you have a new identity written as sine squared of theta equals a constant minus cosine of theta squared. And I'm putting cosine of theta squared in parentheses here versus cosine squared of theta because writing it this way is going to be a lot easier to work with, as you'll see below. And already with this new trig identity, notice how 1 minus cosine of theta squared kind of looks like 4 minus x squared. But there are a couple differences, right? So for 1, you have a 4 in the original problem, not a 1. And then you also have this variable x. So you might already have an idea of where I'm going with this and what you can do with the original problem to introduce this trig identity in a way where it's easier to solve. So leave a comment if you see it. And if you don't yet, that's OK. Hold that thought, because what I'm going to do is right now I want to work backwards from the sine squared of theta identity above because I want the 4 minus x squared expression that we have to look something like that identity. And because we have this 4 here, it doesn't even matter if it's a perfect square or not. It doesn't matter if it's pi square root of 7, whatever it is. As long as it's a constant, why don't we just factor it out from both terms? So you now have 1 minus 1 fourth x squared in the parentheses. And even though you didn't have even division of 4 for what's in front of the x squared, other than now you have a 1 fourth, that's OK. We don't care about that because check this out. I know that you have this 1 fourth term in front of x squared here, but in the identity above, you have a cosine of theta, which basically has a 1 in front. But you know what's really cool is, remember that for any constant, you can always rewrite it as a square of another constant. So if we think of 1 fourth as the square of something, what this allows us to do is rewrite the expression so that when 1 fourth is written as 1 half squared, because you have 1 half squared times x squared, they can now be conveniently grouped together by putting the 1 half x part within these parentheses. And ah, check this out. Now we're getting closer and closer to looking like the trig identity because above in the trig identity, you had 1 minus something squared. And here you've got 1 minus something squared. So I know I told you to think about what we could substitute in for the original integral to use the trig identity here. And getting one step closer to that, the first thing I want to do is I want to rewrite the expression now by introducing in the work that we did above so that the denominator now becomes the square root of 4 times in parentheses 1 minus 1 half all squared. I forgot to say 1 half x. And when you take this a step further, remember that because you have the square root of a constant times something, it's the same as taking the square root of that constant and you can bring it out, which I'm going to do here because the square root of 4 is 2. So I bring that out of the radical. And taking this a step further, if you happen to figure it out, the way we can bring the trig identity now into the problem is we want 1 minus something squared to look like 1 minus cosine of theta squared. So why don't we just set that something to cosine of theta, which in our case is the entire part that's inside the parentheses, that 1 half x. And then when you solve for x by multiplying by both sides by 2, 
and you have x equals 2 cosine of theta here. The reason why a u substitution now works is because when you take the derivative of both sides, notice how on the left-hand side now, dx is left by itself. You don't have a variable x in front of it, like how we got stuck in the original part of the problem. This means you can now safely substitute it into the original integral, because now when we rewrite it on the numerator, instead of dx by itself now times that constant 1, it's substituted in with this negative 2 sine of theta d theta. And so for the denominator, that 1 half x part, if you remember under the radical, will now be cosine of theta due to our u substitution. And the reason why this is useful is because remember with the trig identity, we know that we found that 1 minus cosine squared of theta is the same as sine of squared of theta. And this is really convenient because now when you take the square root of sine squared of theta, the sine squared of theta and the square root cancel in such a way where now this is a really easy integral. We're left with negative 1 times the integral of sine of theta d theta all over sine of theta, simplifying further to simply integrating d theta times this constant negative 1. And we finally find that negative theta plus c is what the integral is going to be. But hold on, not so fast. We need to go back to a term for x, because we can't solve this in terms of theta. The original problem was in terms of x. But if you remember, we said above that 1 half x equals cosine of theta. So if you want to get rid of the cosine part of the theta on the right-hand side, you can undo that by simply taking the arc cosine of both sides and substitute that back in to give you this final answer. And if this was fun for you, I've got another treat because if you want some more trig substitution practice for integrals like this on your next exam, you're going to definitely not want to miss this video.